Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To all old and new subscribers, you are very welcome. The audio that you're about to listen to today was recorded a little over a year ago. It is an excerpt of a live prophecy that was going on, a live prayer call actually, before it turned into prophecy. It's often my habit to get on the line with one or more persons and we go before the Lord for the protection of this ministry. We go before the Lord to pray on the messages he's given us. And as the Holy Spirit leads my heart, that is often how I set the agenda for the prayer call. But what began to happen last year and is still happening up to now is that the Heavenly Father interjects into the midst of the prayer. After all, prayer is a communication with God. It's the most important and powerful form of communication that we have with the Heavenly Father. What began to happen is as we began to pray stronger and stronger and as we would rise in the spirit hitting on many of the written prayer points that I would share with the group so that we would be guided and directed how to pray. Many times the Lord intervened in the prayer and I would begin to speak off topic we would be praying for something else. We might be praying for our personal needs. We might be praying for our families and the Lord would begin to interject and he would begin to talk about the political changes coming to the United States. That's a prayer call that has been shared with everyone on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Or sometimes the Lord would interject and he would be talking about the crash of money in the United States, how the spirit that governs money, mammon, is such an idol in America that he, God, will crack the back of the dollar and destroy the U.S. currency so that the people who hold money as a God in this nation would be humbled. But not only that, so that even the church would be brought down to the level where we as a collective will truly come to understand what it means. Give us this day our daily bread. It is no secret here on the master's voice that the Lord has said that America is corrupt. America is morally fallen. America is perditious, meaning that she has set her foot on a path where now it's impossible for the nation of America to turn back. And the nation of America is not a lost or a loose concept. America is built up of the people who live here. So whenever I'm speaking from the Lord or I say America, I am speaking of the people who live in this country. The prayer call that you are about to hear came about on November the 11th, 2022. I'd taken the day off and I was busy organizing my closet and I was using headphones and that is why unfortunately the audio that you will hear is not going to be as clear as what you may be hearing now it's extremely grainy and that's because we had been seeking god for mercy on behalf of these children that i'm always prophesying about these children that get abused these children that are trafficked even the young ones that are aborted because people don't think that abortion is a sin in America. It was burning on our hearts at that time. And that was also the time when I had closed the blog. That was the time that I had stepped away for three months. So I was not really expecting the Lord to come as strong or to come with the revelations that he came with. What God began to reveal on November 11th, 2022, as we were praying for children is information about the pedophile mafia in the church in the United States. The Lord was accusing the American church in particular, but you can expand this word to just talk about any church anywhere and any bunch of Christians anywhere that does this. The Lord was saying that in America, Christians love pedophiles, that it's the pedophiles they idolize and they love. He said that they're rapists, which means that they take sex by force from people who don't want to give it. We all know what a rapist is when we see them on TV, but we go blind, or at least millions of us go blind. When the rapist is wearing a collar and has a title like elder, deacon, bishop, or pastor, prophet, apostle, the Lord was indicting his church and saying that the church is a shame to him because instead of having compassion for victims, or caring when he, God, the ruler of all flesh, 
is revealing the evil that men do in this nation and hide it behind the pulpit. The Lord says that in fact, the church rushes to sympathize with the pastor. Touch not my anointed, they say. You don't have proof of allegations, they say. They take their sympathy and they cover the wicked. They cover the Freemasons. They cover the occultists. They cover the homosexuals that stand in the pulpit. Live your truth is what the church in America says. At least he's being true to himself. Did Jesus, did Jesus die on the, tr on the cross for men to live their truth? Is the Holy Spirit given for us to indulge our secret desires? Is it acceptable for ministers of the gospel to preach fiery sermons in the pulpit on Sunday and then be caught on tape sleeping with men for the rest of the week? So the Lord interjected. And what the Lord was showing me was concerning Bishop T.D. Jakes and another pastor by the name of Jamal Bryant. You will hear their names in the prayer call. I will do my best. I've done my best with the audio and I hope that it will be clear. The audio was much longer, but it contained information about myself, personal things that God was sharing with me. It also contained personal information about the other people on the line. And so I had to cut those things out. But the Lord has made me leave a little bit of it in, just so we in America can understand that while some of us spend our time on blog gossip blogs and channels getting information, some of us receive the truth that we have while in prayer while seeking God, not for mercy for rapist pastors, but we are seeking God for mercy for little children that are passed around and given up as offerings to these pastors. There's a prophecy from a long time ago. It's called no more false prophecy. And God was saying that certain ministers that are standing in the pulpit today, beloved with millions and millions of followers around the world, the Lord was exposing these men and women and saying that they have sinful appetites, saying that they are almost like leprechauns and magicians in how they have cooked the brains of the modern day church so that the church hates to hear anything against these men and women of God. What you don't understand is that you're under a spell. You are, you are an idolater. You are a man worshiper. You're a man pleaser. These people have gotten under your skin. They've woven a web of deception around you that is so deep and so thick, like a mist, like a fog, that even when God is trying to wake you up and bring you out of that deception, you fight for them as if they are your uncle, your mother. But of course, for most of you, they are your online pastor. You don't know them. You've never met them. You've hardly prayed to God to test their fruit. But for decades and decades, the Lord was saying, these people had departed from the path of righteousness and they were now standing clothed in nothing but their fornication, their homosexuality, the adultery that they commit. Some of them he accused of drug use, some of them of perverting the scriptures. And the pity is that the church is so poorly taught that even if someone twists the word of God and give it back to them, as long as it makes them feel good and gets them hype, they think they're listening to true prophecy. True prophecy exposes what is done in the dark. True prophecy exposes those who go to the black mass and the black Sabbath. On this audio, you will hear the Holy Spirit revealing things that I myself had no knowledge of prior, except that he started to show those things in other dreams and visions that are on the Master's Voice prophecy blog. The fact that they even catch old people who are 70 years and older, that's right. They grab them and they chain them in underground basements. And the Lord says that they rape them hour upon the hour until a person's backside is torn up and the person becomes incontinent. They shed waste on themselves. And I saw the old people in shackles in basements. They leave them down there with the feces caked on them because that's all part of what occultists, Illuminati worshipers, and brotherhood find funny. I've been warning you about these people for years now, but everything, everybody thinks it's a joke. Everybody thinks it's funny, except it's not funny because the Bible says, because now the time has come when judgment begins at the house of the Lord. 
And what most people don't seem to understand is that when God starts cleaning up, he will always come to those of us that he has called to the ministry first. He has set us in front to speak to his people in his name. That comes with power. That comes with authority. That comes with a sense of responsibility. But we are responsible to him first. And when we begin to go astray and make sacrifices to the Baphomet, when we begin to go astray and begin to indulge our personal lusts, when we become licentious and sinful with craven appetites for young men and young boys, when we are males, when we are lesbians wearing tight body wrap dresses, when we are witchcraft musicians, who when the Lord warns you about them, then you get stung because you love them and you already know all their rap li lyrics. So how can they be evil? How can they be defiled? What you're basically saying is, how can God be right? And I'm wrong because I like them. So someone must be lying here and I choose God to be the liar. The time has come when judgment would start at the house of the Lord, but it's not gonna end there, Christians. If you are new to this blog, you need to look up several prophecies. One of them is called the end of the way of the wicked. And the other one is called the way of the wicked is darkness and thorns. In those prophecies, God warns that all those who support rapists, wolves in the pulpit, all those who make excuses after he has exposed someone and say, I need proof of this, but where's the proof? as if you ever saw Isaiah or Ezekiel in the Bible with a PowerPoint presentation proving the things that God had sent them to say. It would help you if you go and watch those prophecies and also read them on the Master's Voice Prophecy blog because there's an important key facet that most of you are missing. After God gets done cleaning up at the top, he's going to clean the church and purge it with fire right down to the bottom. That's right. It's interesting to hear about T.D. Jakes now, but the Holy Spirit is going to come and ask you why you have a vibrator in your home as a woman. Why you have those weird little balls that male and females are putting into their bodily crevices and saying that it's for health. God is going to come to you and ask you why you have porn on your computer. God is going to come to you and ask you why you are a gossip, why you are a liar, why you are an adulterous husband or wife, why you think that flirting with a woman in the office isn't cheating as long as you haven't taken off her clothes. You've taken them off a thousand times with your mind, but you still will make an excuse. God is going to clean up the leaders first because God is actually setting a precedent. He is saying that he's not going to allow the world to accuse the church of immorality and he sit there and act like he's blind to it. After he gets done with the leaders, after he gets done with the false prophets on YouTube that I have been telling you for years are going to start dropping dead because they have not stopped defiling the name of God. He never sent them. They went without being sent. After he has cleared out the pulpits, after you have seen the pastors dropping dead in the pulpits, as I told you in 2021, that in the middle of the sermon, they are going to have strokes and heart attacks and drop right there because the Lord is no longer going to tolerate inefficiency and Satan in the midst of the brethren. After God has cleared up from the roof, he's going to move through the ranks, through every home, Church of Jesus Christ, and all those who are Christian or not, you will be tried with fire, especially if you live in America God is going to try America with burning coals of fire and only the true Christians are going to survive what is coming. So if you're new to this blog, you are welcome. I do not mince my words here. I do not have time for that. I'm working to finish all the prophecies of the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. I'm working to please one person. I work towards an audience of one, Jesus Christ alone. I'm going to, pr to play now the prophecy prayer clip where I'd asked everybody else to be silent on the line, where you will hear the Holy Spirit saying by revelation that T.D. Jakes abuses minors, that he is a pedophile, that he prefers boys between the ages of 10 to 15. Anything older and boys start to get too tall, too strong, too big. And he's not interested in that. When I recorded this clip, 
I personally made up my mind that it was not something I would ever put on the internet. But the problem is that there are far too many people who use their Christian robe to cover smut. There are far too many people, far too many in the midst of us pretending to be Christians who will rush to cover a rapist and a pedophile that God is going to deal with instead of saying a single word of compassion for people who have been sexually abused. To those who have been sexually abused in the church, I say this to you. God says that your pain will be assuaged. He says that he will fight for you. It is in the two prophecies that I mentioned. The end of the way of the wicked and the way of the wicked is darkness and thorns. God says that he's going to be your advocate. God says that he's going to fight for you. God says that even if your abuser died, he's going to make it right. And if your abuser is alive, he is going to deal with it. They will no longer mock you and you will no longer have to go through the torture and pain that you feel of knowing a so-called man of God, a so-called choir director, a so-called deacon, a so-called female elder or a mentor or a youth pastor abused your young body and then went on to have a bright and shining career in these United States. God says that all the dirt is going to come out. They're going to fall from their high places. They're not going to be able to run away and resign their position in peace. The Holy Spirit will hunt them down. Just as I prophesied that the Holy Spirit is also going to open all the cold case files. And since I brought that prophecy over a year and a half ago, you can suddenly see all the dead bodies coming out from the lakes and the rivers. They even dug someone up from a mall and the killer's wallet had fallen into the cement hole where he thought he would hide her body forever. God is just. God will not let sexual abuse fall under the radar. And to all of you who breach the scripture, Romans chapter one and verse 32, to all of you who advocate and feel sad for gays in the pulpit, I only have one thing to say to you. Welcome to Pedophile Junction. Welcome to the exposure of your great men and women of God. Welcome to the indictment of the Holy Spirit. And as you feel that shame, of knowing that you are the type of person who opens your mouth to defend the guilty, remember what the Lord said in his word in Exodus chapter 34. I'm the God who keeps covenant with my people, but I will no means, I will by no means pardon or excuse the guilty. I will visit their crimes unto the third and the fourth generation. And that is why the potter's house is going to fall down and crumble to dust. There will be nothing there. I already spoke it to let people know that the Lord would rather have a badminton court there, a tennis court there. They'll turn it into a mall so that the kids can go and get their sketchers there. But he is not going to have that defiled temple standing and mocking him in the earth. And after the trees fall, God is coming after the bushes and after the bushes have been hacked, the Lord will mow the grass. Prepare church. Your day is coming. T.D. Jakes and the rest of them will go first. The political elite will go first. After that, the vengeance of the Lord will come to those who say, touch not my anointed when the anointed is actually a black mass Sabbath going human trafficking, pedophile rapist who goes by the title of Bishop. I'm Celestial from the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. God bless you and until I see you again, goodbye. Big small boy, he rapes young boys. He rapes boys between the ages of 10 and 15. That's his preference. He doesn't like the small, small babies because he's a big man. He's a big man. So he wants a body to feel. He wants a body to feel. God says he likes the butt of boys that are called youth. A youth. Anyone under the age of 19 is a youth. 10, 11, 12, 14, 16. He doesn't want to go above that because now the boy is too big. There are other ministers who like to sleep with actual men. And this man called Pastor Jamal Bryant. Also another big famous one. He likes what is called a young man, a young man, somebody who is making his own decision that he's gay, right? God says this is one of the gayest pastors in black America, Jamal Bryant. 
Jamal Bryant is his name, one of the gayest back, black pastors ever. He likes young men. This is a man who can make his own decision, a 21-year-old, a 23-year-old, someone who has decided, yes, I like gayness, I want to be gay. That's the kind that this one goes for. Jamal Bryant is his name. J-A-M-A-L and then B-R-Y-A-N-T. God says one of the gayest in the black community that you will ever see. As fruity as a fruit basket, Jamal Bryant, he likes um, young men who can choose to be his lover. The TDJs like boys between the ages of 10, 11, 13, 14, maybe 15, but only if the boy is slender, if the boy is small for his age, if he's a big 15-year-old, that man is not interested in him. See my suffering today. See my suffering today that I have to see this. And then people will rebuke me and shame me and silence me. Why? Because God says they are pedophile worshippers. I hope you are listening to this church of Jesus Christ. If I ever decide to release this prayer call, I hope you hear what your God has to say about you, that you are a bunch of pedophile worshippers. Pedophile worshippers. Pedophile lovers. Pedophile supporters. The pastors you love are pedophiles. They like child flesh. They like youth flesh. They like the tight backsides of young males. And there you are flinging your tithe money at them. Won't that money take you to hell? Apostle Peter, he knew what he was saying when he said, your money perish with you, whether it was Peter or Paul who said it. Your money perish with you. That's where your money is taking you, to perdition, to hellfire itself, because you are partnering in covenant with pedophiles, rapists of boys and girls. TDJ Jamal Bryant, gay as you want to be, gay as anything. So God is saying it's not only R. Kelly who pees in people's mouths. He says this is a habit. R. Kelly was indicted on some evidence that shocked everyone. Everyone was shocked to hear that there was physical evidence of R. Kelly urinating into the mouth of an underage child, a minor, 14 years old. God says this is an old habit. It is just R. Kelly's bad luck that he got caught on faith. God says this is a predilection. A predilection is a particular underhanded and disgusting habit that someone loves very much, but they know because of what it is, the nature of it, they are forced to keep it secret. They cannot bring it out into the open. It would be roundly condemned by everyone who hears it because the human mouth is not a urinal. Well, God says that R. Kelly is not the only person who performs this act, that many of them do it at the Black Mass. Many of them do it at the Black Sabbath because the job at the Black Mass, at the Black Sabbath, is to defile and utterly desecrate the human vessel. To desecrate something means that you destroy it in such a way that you cannot even look at it anymore and discern what the original purpose was for. So it's like having a house and you go through every part of the house, smashing the windows, breaking the doors, smashing the floors, ripping out the sinks, ripping out the toilets until you have destroyed the house from the attic to the basement and when you walk through it, you can't even say, this is a house. This was a place that was created to be a place of comfort and safety and security for a family or for one person. It doesn't look like a house anymore. It's a nightmare. It's a disaster. That is what they do at the Black Mass, God says. That is what they do at the Black Sabbath. They desecrate human beings, and then when they're finished, at the end, a grand flourish, they put them to death, mostly young adults and children. Mostly young adults and children are torn apart as part of the grand finale. They tear people. I see that sometimes a person can be just arms and legs, shelter, just arms and legs in a bloody pile. I don't know how they tear them, but I just see that when they finish tearing you, you are not a whole being. They have ripped you to pieces and you die. The 
this is a lot for me. I just, we just die in agony. We just die in a lot of pain. We just die a terrible death. Basically. Black Mass, God is saying, Black Sabbath. We call it the devil. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a brain child. Brain child, Satan. The conception of the evil one. Satan dreams of what we cannot imagine. My sister. God says that Satan can conceive of what the human being cannot bear. And this is why they reject my testimony. God says that's the reason they reject me when I come to them. They cannot bear the reality of what I say. They cannot bear the reality of what I show you. That is why they reject you and they reject me also. And they say it is not possible. God says that is because the human heart cannot bear what Satan can think of. And that's because they think they understand the devil, my sister. They really think that they understand this creature. And they know how he thinks and they know what he can come up with and do to people. So how can they bear the reality of what actually happens at a ritual? If you took them to a ritual and you forced them, to watch everything that they do to these children, they would die of a heart attack. They would die of a stroke before it even was at 10 minutes. 10 minutes of the ritual, you will see them dropping like flies from shock, cardiac arrest, heart attack. They think they know what the devil can do, and they have no clue what he is able to do. That's why they reject the testimony of the Lord. going to hell to show you what they do in hell. I'm taking you to the bowels of the underworld where the dark workers work iniquity. They are workers of iniquity. Iniquity is deep darkness. Deep sin. The kind of sin that people don't talk about in the daytime. That's where we're going. Into the bowels of the earth. So you can see what the devil is doing to small and big people. Children are not the only people caught up in the world of ritual. They have grandmothers down there raping them. How evil to be 70 years old and having someone sodomize you, tying you to the wall, sodomizing you every hour until you want to die, until you have pooped on yourself about 10 times. They are making people incontinent down there by abusing them in the backside. Old people that they catch. It's not just children. It's every age group. No one is exempted from the torture of the wicked ones. They have covered the earth with their iniquity. And I will lose their blood in the time of the end because my judgment is coming right now. My judgment is coming right now. Watch the news headlines, Miss Celestial. Watch the news headlines and see me working. When you see the news headlines, you will know the Lord heard our prayer. The Lord answered our intercession. The Lord, he took pity on the innocent. Watch the news headlines and see whose name is going to be there. Won't it be the famous name, the big name? You think I'm going to let them get away with it? You think I'm going to let them hide forever? You think that I'm going to let them go to their grave in peace? They will go to their grave in pieces. I will expose them before the very people who love them. All their fans will know the truth about them. All the people who love pedophiles, you are about to enter pedophile junction. I'm going to expose them by their names. You will see their faces on the news. You will see the tape of what they have done. You don't think I'm able to do that? Watch me work, children. Watch me work. You will see sex tapes until you repent of your sins because you worship demons. These people are demons. They are filled with spirits and they perform what is not lawful for men. They are pedophiles and rapists of the elderly. Who can rape a 70-year-old grandmother? Who has the heart to do that? These ones do. And you approach them with so much mercy. 
you are so willing to forgive them their sins. Who made you God? Who made you able to forgive sins that I cannot stand? Who gave you the right to forgive the defiler of an eight-year-old who dies crying my name? A child who never heard the gospel is dying and saying, please help me, God. Please help me, God. How do my innocents know my name? These children are being born in captivity. Nobody preaches the gospel to them. Nobody tells them about Jesus. Nobody sings to them, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. They have never seen a Bible. But when they are dying, it's my name they are calling. They know me because they were with me in the beginning. Through me are all things that were made. Every child knows me, you wicked people that don't teach your children about Jesus. You don't teach your children a single word about me. Your children know me despite your pride. They know that I am real, and you are the one who steals the faith out of their hearts and then let them grow up into these adults who are blind, deaf, and dumb to spiritual things. You did that. You took me out of the house. You threw me into the trash. You rejected me. You refused and said, there will be none of that in this house. You are the reason your children are empty and flying like kites in the spirit realm that are not tied to anything solid. You did that. Repent of your wicked ways. Repent of your evil. Don't go online. Don't answer anybody's questions. Let them write anything they want to write. You just leave them there. That's, it. That's their gift. I gave them a gift. I sent them a gift. Some of them opened the gift. Some of them didn't open the gift. Some of them didn't want that gift. They spat on the gift. They cursed the gift. They called the gift a witch. But some of them opened the gift. And the gift has blessed them. They are strong now. They are ready now. They are full of faith now. They can stand what is coming. Some of them, they have no idea what is coming. They will learn when it starts to happen to them. When these prophecies are happening to these people, my child, they will wake up so strongly and they will remember you. And that is the fulfillment of the scripture. Then they will know that the prophet was among them. When the prophet is no longer with them, they will know it was a real prophet. Not the fake kind, but it will be too late for some of these people. I told you a lot of your subscribers are going home because they don't have faith. If I leave these people here, the beast system will eat them up. All of them will take them out of the beast. They are so weak. They never grew their harvest in the harvest time. They never planted one seed in the seed time. Now it is time to reap the harvest of a strong faith. There's no strong faith in these people. They cannot withstand Barack Obama. Obama is merciless. Obama is going to kill his own children. He's going to kill his own daughter. If he can kill his daughters, who can he not kill? Whose daughters are safe? Tell me, young women on this line, whose daughters are safe from the man who would kill his own seed? No one is safe from the beast. So you must come out from among them and separate from them speedily. You must pray day and night until the door opens for you to leave this place. Day and night without sleep. I will avenge all these children. I'm going to pay. You think I don't know who raised them? You think I don't know who sacrificed them? Each child that they divided on the table and ate that child. I know who ate which piece. Can you and Selfer hear me on this call? Every child who was divided into pieces and eaten, I know who ate the fingers, the toes, the private parts, the brain, the backbone. I know who ate which piece. They will vomit it up in their destruction. They will vomit up everything they ate in the day of their judgment. I know who ate children. I know who ate the elderly. I know who ate the women. I know who ate men. I know who ate young boys and girls. 
they will vomit it up in the day of their destruction. That's why I love you, because you don't think that I'm too much. That's why I chose you, because you let me speak my mind. You don't stop me. You don't tell me, oh, this is too gross. I can't stand it, Jesus. You let me talk. You keep quiet. You listen to me. You allow me to express myself. You allow me to say all that is on my mind, all my rage against watching blood flow on this planet. I am sick of seeing the blood of my saints. I am sick of seeing the blood of innocent people. I am sick of seeing abortion. The bodies of these children, there are so many that if I didn't have angels to process them, we would never be able to process how many children are aborted per day on earth. It is millions of young people dying every day, every week. Murder, assault, rape, sacrifices, rituals, and people eating human beings. We would never be able to process all the deaths. One day you will be telling police where to find the body. One day it will be you. The police will be asking you, this person is missing, and you will tell them, that person is buried under this tree, under this rock, under this place. They are wearing this and that clothes. It will be you calling the police and saying, there's a man who has been thrown into this water. He's wearing this. If you go there now, the body is still fresh. You will call the police and tell them where to find the person. And everybody will be looking at you and asking, is it you that killed the man? How do you know that the man is there? You know them and the questions that they ask. All these things I told you this five years ago, that you will help the police to find the missing people. You will help the police to find the children who are being locked up. You will tell them the child is still alive. This person is holding the child at this place, this address. This is the street. I saw it in my vision. They are at this street in the third apartment on the third floor. And they will go break the door, find the child. And you will be seated somewhere far away so they can't say, you put the child there. They will look for you and tell you, we're looking for this woman. We're looking for these people. They were stolen here. And you will say, well, those people are in a container in Mexico. I'm going to use you mightily, mightily. You will frighten people. I told you they will not talk to you. They will see you and just say, no, that lady, no, let us leave that woman alone. She's with her family. They're eating food. Let's just take a picture from over here and leave her alone. Nobody will be bothering you. I just don't want you to be blocking me. You are always trying to block me. I don't like it. I do not like that. Nobody can block me. There's no two gods. There's only one God. And it's the God who's talking on this phone call. Nobody can tell me, I, I don't want you to do this. Nobody can tell me, I don't want to do this. When I say you must do something, you will do it. When I send you, you will go. When I say preach, you will preach. When I say don't preach, even if the people beg you to preach, you will be silent. It will be like your lips cannot open. It will be like you can't speak English. You will not speak if I say don't speak. Even if the whole world wants you to answer, you will not answer. But if they don't want you to speak and I say speak, even if the whole world wants you to shut up, you will say what I tell you to say. You work for me. You don't work for people. You don't work for anybody, even your mother who gave birth to you. You're not working for her. You are working for the God of heaven and earth. He says that we should keep on praying. I was about to say we should, um, I was about to say we should end the call because he says that it's enough what we prayed. God is saying he will pay back the debt. 
of these children. He will pay it back in full for each life. He says for each tear, each tear that came out of the eyes of a child for sexual abuse, molestation, rape, he will pay back the person who did it to them. Each time the child cries, every tear is a penalty. So whether that penalty they will pay it here on earth, whether that penalty will be added to their punishment in hell, I don't know, but he says every single tear, one by one, every tear is a punishment to the person who abused the child. Ten people abuse a child, each of the tears of the child will be given to the ten of them. Each of them will carry the tears that they caused that child to cry. God says they will be given their whole penalty. Nothing will be left out of their judgment. Their whole judgment, complete, will be packaged and given to them. God says that some of them are going to be dying very soon to pay their debt for what they did to children. He says many children are going to see even their own mother and father dying. The mother and father who was human trafficking them. The mother and father who was giving them to people for people to rape them. The mother and father who were raping them themselves. Raping your own child. God says funerals are coming for all the sexual molesters. The sexual abusers. The wicked. He says we have prayed enough for them. We have to get out of America. We have to go quickly to another place and move out from this place because they murder prophets here in America. They silence those who speak like you. Boldly, no fear. They hate that. They wonder what is making you so brave. They know you don't have money. They know you don't have anything. They are looking at you in these videos and they are wondering what makes this woman so brave? What gives her the guts to talk about us like this? Why does she know all this stuff? Who is telling this woman? And some of them are afraid of you because some of them are, are Christians. Some of them in this FBI, they know God. Their grandmother used to pray for them. They know God. They know about God. They know that God reveals secrets. But they can't tell the other people this woman is speaking by a spirit. This woman is speaking by the Holy Spirit because they don't want to be mocked. But they fear you in their heart. Not like someone from here is telling you anything. They know you are speaking by God. They just cannot tell the boss this woman is speaking by God because they will be mocked. Those ones have fear, but others are very angry. Very angry. Why is this woman telling all our secrets to these common people? Why is this woman exposing private things? We haven't started even doing the things. We haven't started building this plan. We are planning to build this city. You are telling these people about the cities that are coming in the future. The fallen angels are going to build the city. You are telling the people that technology, not from Earth, will build the city before the technology has been given to the human beings to build the city. Why are you doing this? Do you know how much you have angered these people? Why are you telling all their secrets? That's how they feel. Why is she exposing us? And now everybody is watching these videos and hearing about all the things that we want to do. This woman is telling people ahead of time our plans. Who told her to tell our plans? Who sent her to talk like this? 